It is no secret that comic book movies are box office giants. Last year alone, comic book movies grossed a total of $3.2 billion. Though, these films are often criticized for being mindless and having a lack of depth. One of the greatest filmmakers of all time, Martin Scorsese, said that these films are in fact not cinema, and I believe his views have some merit to them. Hollywood is oversaturated with forgettable comic book movies, but we're not talking about those films today. Today we are talking about the best of the best this genre has to offer. There probably will be spoilers on this list, so without further ado, let's talk about my number 10 spot. Number 10, Avengers Infinity War. Avengers Infinity War is one of the most entertaining films in the MCU. There is not a single scene that drags, and it is non-stop from beginning to end. In the action department, this film succeeds. The Battle on Titan is a contender for being one of my favorite action sequences the MCU has to offer. I know what I'm saying has already been said many times, but Thanos is easily the best MCU villain. He's one of the only three-dimensional villains in this franchise, and he's actually really threatening. I know the ending to this film was undone in the follow-up Avengers Endgame, but it is still jaw-dropping to see almost all of our main characters turn to dust. I actually prefer Infinity War over Endgame because I believe it has better pacing, and it is just a more rewatchable film. Number 9, Guardians of the Galaxy. This film is honestly a lightning in a bottle. I mean, DC tried to replicate this, and well, they crapped the bed. All of the characters in this film risk being annoying, but because of the writing and the performances, this film ends up serving its purposes and making you care deeply about every single one of these characters, especially Peter Quill and Gr This film is also easily the funniest film in the MCU, and I'm not a big fan of Marvel humor, and that is because Marvel humor tends to lessen the weight of emotional scenes, and this film does not do this. This film knows exactly when to tell a joke. This film also has an excellent soundtrack that I happen to own on vinyl, but that is just the icing on the cake, but still, not the worst way to spend $25. Number 8, Superman the Movie. Now, this is the film that started it all. If I had one adjective to describe this film, it would be grandiose. I know that some of the special effects in this film might be considered dated to today's standards, but... This film does not fail to accomplish the feat of making you believe that a man can truly fly. If I had only one thing to say about this movie, I would completely gush over Christopher Reeve. He was literally born to play this role. Casting Christopher Reeve as Superman is one of the best casting decisions in filmmaking history. He is among the ranks of Hugh Jackman as Wolverine and Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. He captures the charm of Superman to a T. John Williams' score to this film is just iconic. It's one of his best. Of course, John Williams completely nailed this score, as he usually does. If I had only one word to describe it, it would be epic. Marlon Brando also gives an excellent performance as Jor-El, but I mean, let's be honest, that's expected. He's Marlon Brando. This film is just so hopeful, and that is something we need now more than ever. Number 7, Iron Man. Talk about an amazing way to start a franchise. I just love how this film shows you, even if you're a rich billionaire douchebag, you can still evolve into something greater than yourself. And this is because of Robert Downey Jr.'s amazing performance as Tony Stark slash Iron Man. Robert Downey Jr. is yet another actor who was born to play their role. Robert Downey Jr. completely disappears into the role. 
Not once do I feel like I am watching Robert Downey Jr. play Tony Stark. 100% of the time, I feel like I am watching Tony Stark himself ripped out of the pages of the comic books and placed right onto the big screen. I just love how this movie is a good story first and not a cinematic universe setup movie. If it weren't for this film, I don't believe that the MCU would be as popular as it is. This film sold the world that Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man. Number 6, Joker. I just love how different this film feels to all the other more bombastic comic book movies that come out today. This film was very inspired by Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver. And to many, this film is a blatant ripoff of that film. Yes, this film does have a very similar plot structure to Taxi Driver, but I feel that this film is different enough for it to establish its own identity. And nothing is really wrong with being similar to Taxi Driver, in my opinion. I mean, this film introduced a whole new generation to Scorsese's masterpiece. And that's not a bad thing at all. And the reason why this film works is because of the amazing performance by Joaquin Phoenix. You start out this film feeling absolutely terrible for his character Arthur Fleck. But as the movie goes on, you begin to get increasingly terrified of him as he transitions into the Joker. It is extremely difficult. For an actor to perform a performance like this off, but only actors like Joaquin Phoenix can do this. His Oscar was very well deserved. I love how this film feels more like a drama than a comic book movie. I believe Hollywood should make more movies like this. Number 5, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. To say that I didn't have much confidence in Sony's ability to make a good Spider-Man movie is quite an understatement, but this movie blew my expectations out of the water. I have not seen a film understand the character of Spider-Man so much since Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2. I just adore the theme of this film. One of the main aspects of Spider-Man is his relatability. You don't have to be a god, you don't have to be super rich, you don't even have to be super smart or the chosen one in order to be Spider-Man. He can be you or me. I just love how this movie is a comic book brought to life and that is an aesthetic I am literally obsessed with. This movie is a childhood dream brought to life. Number 4, Logan. What a beautiful send-off to the character of Wolverine. They honestly couldn't have done it better. It's optimistic enough, but also pretty grim at the same time. Hugh Jackman's performance is at the top of its game in this film. For him, hope is completely lost, and he brings that energy so well that this film is actually difficult to watch at times. I know by the end of this film, he ends up giving the ultimate sacrifice for the survival of his daughter Laura, but it honestly feels so good to see this man finally at peace knowing that he can rest and not have to worry about the safety of his daughter. And that is both heartbreaking and beautiful. And the cherry on top of all this is that this movie is gory as hell. It is literally the comic books brought to life. It is so satisfying to watch all the fight scenes in this movie. Number 3. Captain America the Winter Soldier and Captain America Civil War. For the number three spot, I had to cheat because these two films are practically tied in my mind. And this will not be the first time on this list I will do this, just to get that out there. If I had only one thing to say about these movies, I would praise the really creative use of genre blending that is used in these films. 
these films feel like a mix between the Jason Bourne movies and the more bombastic comic book movies that come out today. Because of that, these two films are my favorite entries in the MCU. Captain America the Winter Soldier puts a star-spangled man with a plan into the modern day. Steve Rogers is a type of character who has a very idealistic black and white mindset, but he is placed in a very morally gray world. This film challenges our protagonist's mindset. By doing this, he begins to lose trust in the government that he has advocated for for his whole life. Meanwhile, in the mix of all this, Steve's childhood best friend has been brainwashed into the Russian assassin, the Winter Soldier. Also, the action in this film is brutal as hell. You feel every single punch, every single kick, and every single ounce of sweat. Also, the knife fight scene might be the best action sequence the MCU has to offer. It's only really rivaled by the battle on Titan and the final action set piece in Civil War. Captain America Winter Soldier continues Steve's character arc from the Winter Soldier, but it chooses to put Steve against fellow Avenger Tony Stark. I just love how this film constantly makes you flip-flop between the two sides, and then by the end of the movie, it forces you to make up your mind. And that is something that most comic book movies don't do, and I'm sure that that's the only MCU movie that does this. These two films put together make an amazing character arc for everyone's favorite star-spangled man with a plan. Number 2, Spider-Man 2. This film is a full-body character study disguised as a big-budget blockbuster. It is incredibly rare for films like this to be made, but when they are made, I eat them up like chocolate cake. Out of all the Spider-Man movies and Honestly, maybe out of all the comic book movies, this one has the best understanding of the consequences of being a superhero. This film makes the brilliant choice of showing how Peter's actions as Spider-Man affects his life as Peter Parker. This is the first comic book movie, and probably one of the only ones, to focus more on the man himself rather than his alter ego. Too many this film is boring because of its lack of action, but I actually find this film far more interesting than most comic book movies that come out today. I think it's more interesting to dive deep into the emotional burden of being a superhero rather than just a two hour long forgettable fl action flick of a guy punching things. Even though this film might be lacking in the action department, that does not mean that this film does not have incredible action sequences. The train fight scene might be one of the best action sequences in the whole superhero genre. This scene is incredibly fast-paced and incredibly suspenseful. And to add on top of all this, this film is a freaking meme goldmine. Pizza time. Number one, Batman Begins and the Dark Knight. This probably doesn't come as a surprise to no one, and to some this might even seem cliche, but I believe these two films deserve the number one spot. And I believe that these two movies are tied, and I count them as one big movie. So that's why these two movies take the number one spot on this list. Batman Begins is a fantastic telling of Batman's origin stories. It explores his motivations and what makes him tick. This film isn't an exposition dump either. Everything happens for a reason. These films make a choice of grounding the world of Batman into the real world. I personally like this decision because it gives the filmmakers freedom to tell a darker, dramatic, and more realistic story. I have absolutely no right to talk about this film without even mentioning Heath Ledger's astounding performance as the Joker. The Joker is the most terrifying villain in all of comic book movies. Every time he is on screen, I am gripped to the edge of my seat. 
Heath Ledger completely disappears into this role, and you feel like you are watching the antics of a real-life terrorist. I also love how the Joker is like 10 steps ahead of all the protagonists in this film. That's what makes him so terrifying. I have seen this film countless amount of times, and every time I watch it, the Joker never fails to terrify me. Heath Ledger absolutely stole the show in this film. May he rest in peace. I decided not to include The Dark Knight Rises on this list because I feel like that there are so many plot holes in, the, in that film that end up bogging the film down, and it doesn't really live up to the previous two. I like The Dark Knight Rises a lot, but it's not number one quality. I just love how these films feel more like crime dramas than actual comic book movies. They have more in common with films like The Godfather, A Clockwork Orange, Seven, and Goodfellas. Right. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe, and make sure to hit the bell notification so you can be notified every time I upload a video. And shout out to John Gaynor and Getty Lee. Thanks for watching.